Hi guys, Fog of Gaming here and we are live again from New York City. Today we are going to reveal the best gun for every class. But we are going to do one thing different. A lot of YouTubers will most likely give you their personal preference. We are not going to do that. We are going to show you the best gun based on statistics and based on tests. No personal preference, no I like to do this or I like to do that, only facts. Facts that will help you win your battle. We are going to show you a very familiar gun, one that you all know and we will be comparing this one with the best guns for the other classes. This way you will have an idea of what you are up against. We are going to cover all the guns that are available to everyone. Whether the syndicate guns or the DLC guns are better or not will be covered in another video. Now, you know there aren't as many guns in Battlefield Hardline compared to Battlefield 4, so your options are limited. But on the other side, the best guns stand out more. There is usually only one gun within each class that is somewhat similar to give both sides a fighting chance. So we will show you the best gun and if there is one, we will show you the runner up for the other side. Let's start with the operator. I don't have to tell you that the M416 and the M16A3 stand out far above the rest. These are the most used guns in Battlefield Hardline. However, the AKM kills faster within 34 meters. Faster than the M4 and faster than the M16. A lot of people don't know this, but which one stands out? Well, the overall winner is the M4. It is slightly superior compared to the M16 in almost every way from time to kill, to rounds per minute, to reload times. But the difference is so small that the M16 is a great runner up for the M4 when you're playing as a cop. The AKM on the other side is better than the M4 in gunfights up to 34 meters. It kills faster, does more maximum and minimum damage and it only needs 3 bullets to kill compared to 4 bullets for the M4. On the other side. The rate of fire is slower, with about 250 rounds per minute less than the M4 and it will take you almost 0.8 seconds longer to reload. The M4 will outperform the AKM for everything beyond 34 meters. This is one of the reasons why the M4 is the overall winner for the operator. Since most of you are very familiar with this gun, I will give you some stats so that we can compare the M4 with the guns for the other classes. Maximum damage is 28. Minimum is 18 and a drop off only starts at 40 meters. A lot of people are confused about what 40 meters is. It is easier to remember when you visualize this. Everybody has played Hotwire on downtown, right? 40 meters is about the width of a road on downtown. The M4 has a rate of fire of 850 rounds per minute and a muzzle velocity of 600 meters per second. When you equip a suppressor, this muzzle velocity will drop to 320 meters per second. And it has a bullet drop of 15 meters per second squared. Luckily this isn't a math class so just remember that the bullets will drop. Don't worry about this value too much. 31 bullets in the magazine and it will take you 2.6 seconds to reload an empty gun and 2.21 seconds to reload a gun when you still have bullets left in the magazine. The last thing that I'm going to mention is the recoil up which is 0.525. The other values don't really mean that much. It pulls slightly to the right, but this means absolutely nothing. I will explain that later on. Now you know a little bit about what this gun is about and we can compare it later with the best guns for the other classes. For the mechanic, there used to be only one. They had to adjust this gun quite a few times already, but still, it kills in no time. There is no counterpart, forget it. If you are a hardcore mechanic, then join the team deathmatch server and get your weapons license as fast as possible because you are really going to want to use this gun as well when you're playing as a criminal. You would be limiting your abilities if you didn't. The average response time of a gamer is about 0.2 seconds. By response time I mean from the time that somebody runs around the corner straight into your crosshairs and the time it takes for you to click your mouse or press your controller. There are guys who are faster but there are also guys who are slower. This gun kills faster than you can click. It kills in slightly more than 0.1 seconds, 0.156 to be precise. This means that if you see a guy around the corner on your map and you pre-fire when you move around this corner, that he would be dead even before he has a chance to press his mouse or controller. This is how fast you can kill. This gun is a beast. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are still referring to the K10, claimed to be the most overpowered gun in Battlefield Hardline. This is why they changed the statistics so many times. It is still the king of the jungle, but 
only up to 11 meters. Do you know how far that is? Look at the range and you know that you're not going to encounter a lot of gunfights from this short range. Unless you set yourself up for gunfights like this. If you decide to stay indoors on certain maps like Bang Job for example, then you will be dominating the battlefield with the K10. If you are looking for range, then go for the P90. It will outperform the K10, but only after 11 meters. So the P90 is the runner-up if you can't use the K10 yet for the criminals. K10 versus M4. The biggest difference is the rate of fire. 850 rounds per minute for the M4, compared to 1200 for the K10. This is the biggest reason why you will kill faster with the K10 in short range firefights. If you prefer to play as an enforcer and you like to blow stuff up, then please go for the SCAR H or the SA-58 OSW. Both of these guns are awesome. However, the SA-58 still stands out as the better killer. Time to kill is insanely short with this gun, only 1.87 seconds. This gun is very similar to the SCAR H. The biggest difference is the muzzle velocity. 840 meters per second for the SA-58, but only 410 for the SCAR H. That's less than half. The other differences are insignificant. This is why the SCAR H is the runner-up for the cops. The biggest downside of both of these guns is the upward kick. Remember that our M4 had a recoil up of 0 0.5 to 5? Well, these guns double that. The worst is the SCAR H with a recoil of 1.1 and then followed by the SA-58 with 1. This means that you will have to compensate for it or use the right attachments on these guns but that is for another video. Besides the upper kick, are these guns better than the M4? Yes, a big yes. The veteran operator players are not going to like this but it's a fact. It kills faster at any range except for the alt 9 meters. The M4 will kill faster from 37 until 46 meters. For all other ranges, the SA-58 is better. So from 0 to 36 meters and from 47 to infinite, your SA-58 will outperform the M4. You have a larger maximum and minimum damage. You will reload faster, especially with bullets left, you will be 0.31 seconds faster than the M4. You only need 3 bullets to kill, 1 less than the M4, but your magazine size is smaller. 21 for the SA-58 and 31 for the M4. Overall, this means that the SA-58 is the better killer. Now, the gun pulls to the right, with 0.2 to be precise. Some of you might be thinking, I don't want to deal with this. I'll go with something else. Um, no, because it really doesn't matter. This small pull to the right doesn't mean anything. Sure, when you're standing in front of a wall and you start shooting at it, your bullet pattern will be slightly to the right. But when you're shooting at an enemy, you're automatically going to compensate for it. You won't even realize that you are doing this. Imagine that you are shooting with any other gun that doesn't pull left or right. When your crosshair is to the left or to the right of your enemy, what are you going to do? You are going to move your crosshair until that enemy is in the center of your crosshairs, right? You don't think about this, it's like Nike, you just do it, like in any other shooter game. Now imagine that you are shooting with the SA-58 with your crosshairs centered on your enemy, but this enemy is far away. When you start shooting, the gun will slightly pull to the right. So in other words, your crosshairs will end up to the right of your enemy. You are going to do exactly the same thing as before. You are going to center your crosshairs without even thinking about it. Now, the gun kills so fast that most of the time it won't even come to this. That's why you don't have to worry about your gun pulling to the right. And finally, the professional. There are two sides to this class. Semi-auto sniper rifles and bolt-action sniper rifles. Basically, semi-auto rifles are the guns that fire bullets a lot faster compared to bolt-action rifles who fire bullets a lot slower. To all the gun experts, I know that my description isn't perfect, but I want to keep things simple for now. After all, we are talking about a game. So don't shoot me for not giving a detailed explanation on the difference between semi-auto and bolt-action. Now, everything depends on your style. Are you an aggressive sniper or a defensive one? So I will show you the best semi-auto and the best bolt-action sniper rifle. If you choose to go for the semi-auto, then go for the PTR-91. This gun stands out. It can kill super fast, but it depends on you. More than any other gun in Battlefield Hardline. The time it takes to kill someone is only 0.337 seconds. 
But this doesn't mean that you will kill in 0.337 seconds. It takes 3 bullets to kill a guy, but you still have to fire those bullets. Now, I'm sure that you have a perfect aim and that you never miss, right? If you manage to put all your bullets in your enemy, then he still has the advantage over you. Even if your time to kill is better than the gun he is using. The reason for this is very simple. Almost no one can click that fast. This is probably your biggest problem that you are ever going to encounter when you're using this gun. Remember that I said that the average gamer needs 0.2 seconds between seeing something and pressing his mouse or controller? That is still valid. For you and for your enemy. So that's already 0.2 seconds before you guys start shooting at each other, but the fight is still fair because you both need 0.2 seconds. Now comes the tricky part. If your enemy is using an automatic gun, he only has to keep that button pressed. You on the other hand, you have to click another 2 times. It won't take 0.2 seconds for each click, you will be faster now because you can click as fast as possible, without that startle effect from your first click. Time to kill is 0.337 seconds, so it will take you this long between your first and last bullet to kill, if you can click that fast. If you click slower, then your own time to kill will increase. So in other words, you will probably be on the losing side. Unless you keep your distance. This is where this gun really shines. From a distance of 57 meters, you will be killing faster than almost every automatic weapon in Battlefield Hardline. Even faster than the M4 which is one of the best automatic guns in the game. Even if you click a little bit slower than average, you will still be winning your gunfights. This is the key to using this weapon. I will explain this further in another video, but you know more than enough to dominate with this weapon. On the other side, you have the bolt action sniper rifles. There is only one that stands out. The other ones have been adjusted so badly that it doesn't really make sense anymore to use them. So basically, your only option is the Scout Elite, but it's a very good option. Super easy to use and it does 75 maximum damage up to a distance of 45 meters. It has the highest muzzle velocity compared to all the other sniper rifles, with 640 meters per second. Which means that you don't have to lead your targets too much, which makes the gun easier to use. Now, which one is the best sniper rifle? The PTR-91 or the Scout Elite? This is a game, and time matters the most. The semi-automatic rifle will by far surpass the bolt action rifle. Time to kill for the PTR is 0.337 seconds with 3 bullets and 0.825 seconds with 2 bullets for the Scout Elite, which is a massive time difference. So the best sniper rifle is the PTR-91. Unless you can headshot everything and everyone, then go for the Scout Elite. Set up your loadout with these guns and you will always have the advantage. This was Fog of Gaming. Share the video with everyone that you know and that includes your grandmother. Thanks for watching and see you on the battlefield.